Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Moving Spotlight Podcast. I am super excited about today, Corbin. It's a good mm-hmm. day. We got a great guest coming up. Surprise guest, international. International. Movie international movie star. Yeah, international movie star. Uh, I'm not going to give you any clues yet. But what <laughs> I want to talk about first, Corbin, what do you think when like actors like get into character so much like daniel day lewis being like carried around the set mm-hmm. on my left foot you know what i mean is that going too far you know i mean i, I know sometimes people call it method acting well, mm. uh, i call it crazy no i'm just kidding uh what do you what do you think of that Corbin? what's your opinion i think it depends i mean carrying somebody around the set if it's really fueling your character i think that's okay but you still have to yeah. be a human <laughs> you, still, you know what I mean? like you still have to like understand that other people are doing their lives as well yeah. uh like i think the no eye contact clause stuff is kind of interesting if it's like a crazy person but i also mm-hmm. think i don't know i just as long as it's fueling that character i just was watching um benedict cumberbatch's like smog like C, uh, CGI thing when he's like mm-hmm. on the floor and I was just yes. thinking what was his rehearsals before that like like when he was alone in his trailer and I'm assuming he was doing method acting I'm assuming he was in there just trying his best and I think that's cool but yeah was he like telling everybody to treat him like a dragon no <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah I, I think it's an interesting thing I mean I think there is a lot of value let's say you're going to play a cop if you can talk to cops and Mm -hmm. you can ride in a cop car if you can do those things like to feel what that life is like then you know the details yes of it i think it is something you know different when you're on set and like let's say you're playing a a jerk and then you're a jerk to everybody because you're like i'm this character you know i don't know to me i think you're right i think it depends if it feeds the actor if it feeds the character i think it's also you know here's another thing i think i think it might be i might be okay with it if everyone accepts what it is yes you know it's it's not totally ridiculous but if like everyone's like okay this person is we all get they're in that mode they're in that mindset Mm -hmm. let's let them be you know let's let them get that get that focus because i do i would say i think that is you know an interesting thing when you're on a set and you know let's say it's kind of an emotional scene when everyone respects that and gets quiet stops moving so Mm -hmm. much Mm -hmm. um there's something wonderful and lovely about it and if it is an emotional scene, but it's like everyone's running around, and there's all this energy, and they're like, okay, now go. It's like, well, Jesus, like, <laughs> yeah. You, cry, you, go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can't kind of like open up mm. the instrument a lot of times, or it's really challenging, you know? For sure. and, and okay, great, good, 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 let's do it again. So I think setting up the energy for the actor um, and the character, I think that is that is, that is is really interesting. Yeah, the carrying around thing, I mean- Carrying around, I that- probably, yeah. I would probably enjoy it, but- Oh yeah, yeah, of course you would enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> and the grapes i need to be fed grapes <laughs> only green only green yeah um and the ones that taste like cotton candy have you had those no cotton candy grapes, cotton candy grapes? i just blow your mind wait wait, 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 that, wait whoa 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 <laughs> sugary there's grapes, grapes that, there's grapes that taste like cotton candy go check it out everybody if you haven't tried them they're amazing yeah interesting cotton candy grapes. okay <laughs> You had no idea. They're out there. BRB. <laughs> uh, BRB. Uh, all right. I want to do a quick whiplash uh, U-turn to our guest today. So we have who I would call an actor's actor. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a, one of my favorite people, a dear friend of mine. I visited him in Finland. Um, we have Finnish actor Johannes Halapinen. And uh, tell me with your last name, Johannes. Even though I've known you forever, it's like I'm still, I'm still trying my best. Help me out here. You were close. It's Holopainen. 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 So beautiful. I love it. Well, Holopainen. thank you. Thank you. Holopainen. Yeah, I've never heard you say it before. So no, because because I was to my ears. <laughs> I was Holopainen. Holopainen. Now I got it. I was scared of it, and now now I know it. How, I also know it's interesting because with with like you know people like from Finland, there's the way Americans say it, and then there's the way you would say it like more in Finnish. And I'm always mm-hmm. like, well, should I try to give it like the Finnish accent, which could sound funny, or do I kind of say it, you know, more like American, but then it's like, <laughs> then it's butchered, you know? So Johannes Hol- uh, Holopainen. Oh, I like that. See, now it's now. I, I remember it. I, I, because I've been so grateful for you to teach me pronunciation and, and the American accent. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I remember this one time you taught me like when I was speaking about sauna, which sauna. is a very, very Finnish thing. And you're like, Johannes, it's sauna. I was like, no, no. <laughs> this one is sauna. It's, it's a Finnish word. So, oh, oh my god, that is so true. Oh my god, Finnish saunas are the best. Saunas are the best. That was one of my favorite things, Corbin. Wow. They are, they are literally everywhere. There's like more saunas than people in Finland, and it is really? like the best thing. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I don't know if that's a fact yeah, or not, a, but I'm just I'm gonna say it. probably not a fact. A sauna forever, <laughs> probably not a fact. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just it's just wonderful. Land of thousand lakes and 
five million saunas. <laughs> five million saunas. saunas. Yeah. Uh, Johannes, I want to jump right into the acting world. Um, we met yeah, because um, you know you're based in Helsinki now, but you were you were in the states, uh, and we met in an acting class. Uh, tell us a little bit, like why why you were in the states? You know, kind of your your journey with acting. I'm just curious. Um, you know, it's such a such a great ride you you're on. Mm, thank you. So so why I came to the states? Well, uh, I think for me it's uh, it seemed seemed finally that uh, I don't want to limit myself or my dreams uh and uh and for me what one reason why i love acting and it gives so much to me is uh as all the adventures and the people i can meet and and all these new new places i can visit and uh and uh new things i can work on and think about and uh at the time in 2016 i think was the first time when i visited la uh it was a it was a good time to visit uh and then i visited more and more in the in the, in the next years mm, i was just i guess i was just curious to know more about acting and uh and uh and as la is uh, such a capital for filmmaking uh it seemed uh well like a good idea to to come where the magic happens and uh, to learn more and it it has given given me so much and uh Probably the most valuable things are friends, which are you and, uh, and, and a couple of other people, Sean McWilliams, for example, uh, a filmmaker as well. So, so already that has is a that seemed like a, a, a meaningful uh, thing to do. And uh, you know, why not? Why not do it? Mm-hmm. Why not follow your dreams and think big and dream big? And uh, and uh, I want to work with. Uh, with the best people all the time and, uh, and who are working on high level and, uh, and are super ambitious and, uh, and, uh, interested about, you know, making, uh, making their vision true. So, so that's part of it. Why, why I came to LA. I, I love that you did that. And, and I, uh, I think not enough actors. I mean, there's certain times in actors lives where they, don't travel because they don't want to miss opportunities. They're like a little bit scared. And I think it's, to me, it's kind of the complete opposite approach. I feel like, I feel like it's great to travel. I mean, I know a lot of people love to travel, but I just think it's sometimes, well, I don't want to miss anything. It's like, yeah, but you're going to gain so much by, you know, traveling, trying new places. I I had a buddy, his parents were going to Italy. They invited him. He's like, John, you think I should go? Like I'd be there for like a month, month and a half. And I was like, yeah, go. I think you should go. Have a great time. And he went. It was amazing. He loves speaking Italian. He loves the food. You know, he wasn't really acting over there, but he got back like a month and a half later. He's like, John, you know, what did, what did I miss? What did I miss? I'm like, nothing. It's all here. It's no, you missed nothing. Yeah. Like, it's all still, all you know, the same. there's still auditions. It's still just like, it's still a big churning wheel, you know? So, and so I, I, I think it's awesome that you did that, Johannes, that you had that experience that you were kind of, you know, brave enough to step out of uh, what you, what you've got going on, which I want to talk about um, hmm. in Finland man you are a busy guy you know shooting shooting films shooting tv shows right now what um what what have you been working on what are you excited about what what what's going on uh well at the moment i'm well the latest thing that i i've been working on is a uh, is actually a play oh cool it's been a couple of years break from from uh from theater acting and i've been very excited to return uh and the and the venue is this very special very tiny 50 seat theater it's like a room basically and the audience is like right next to you you can hear them breathe uh, and uh, and this connection that is able to be built between the audience in there is uh, is such a special thing uh, and the play is is Can a monologue. Like yeah. uh, does that make you feel <laughs> good johannes point, uh, <sighs> you like that connection i'm uncomfortable uh, <laughs> Some people it makes uncomfortable. I'm waiting for like you. That, I'm waiting for your visit at the show, <laughs> and then I can breathe like that. Okay. I can. I know that breath anyway. <laughs> John's here. Oh, it's John there in the darkness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it but it's been super exciting. Uh, I'm working uh, on a monologue play, being on stage by myself, with of course all the light and sound design and 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 the uh, props and the uh, and the great uh, set. Uh, yeah, but that's been fun. That's been a lot of fun because in the theater you can always kind of have that experience of of the play. And it, it's so for me it's always it's always like a, 
like a practice of uh, of concentration, and it's uh, it's something that I really enjoy, you know, to approach and to to really come together with myself. I think uh, to because I when I'm there with the audience by myself, I I come super aware of how am I doing today. So it's always this journey of accepting what's going on and and to to live with it and and through it and uh, and there's never a same night it's always different there's always a new a new challenge to to accept it and uh, in a way the lesson is so simple it's so simple and and it's uh, it's one of it's something that I can, you you can learn every day again and again and on, on set it's it's a bit different uh last uh november in October, November, we were in Tenerife in the Canary Islands shooting a film, uh, a Finnish film, a co-production between Spain and uh, Estonia, if I correct, uh, which was uh, one of the most exciting projects I've been involved in. Uh, because, uh, well, to be able to travel somewhere else uh, makes the whole experience of shooting for me uh, like this one big journey uh, which I can share with the with my fellow actors and the other crew, and we're all there together somewhere, you know, away from home, away from all the all your everyday life, and, and really concentrated on the job, and everything is sort of comes, you know, when you're like having time off, even it it kind of connects to the to the work we're doing, uh, and this particular film was so vivid with uh, different different like smells and and visions and uh, uh it's called hit big and it's coming out this year uh and i'm so much looking forward to it and we were like the sets were like we were in the sewers and in in trash bins and uh, <laughs> uh it was like uh and these characters were all so like full of different layers and uh, and something out of the ordinary and I, I really had a lot of fun challenging myself uh with this with this character and uh, and the director Yipe Lalakepa who is a great artist uh, great filmmaker it was so inspiring to work with a uh, with a filmmaker who is like 110% all the time focused on on the job and uh, and interested to see what the actors bring uh, and and uh, and uh, giving a lot of uh, trust to the actors to to create the characters uh, and not just to obey something that, that he's thought of. Uh, so it was uh, really, really much, really, really fun. Yeah, uh, Cor- it, Corbin, can you tell why I love talking to Johannes yeah, about acting? Uh, yeah, he <laughs> loves it. I was so I wanted to dive right into that. That was so amazing. Yeah, <laughs> so, um, yeah. I mean, you you clearly love acting. You clearly love filmmaking. Like, how do you? So when you walk onto set, you, you come with ideas, you come with all these things. And how do you facilitate that kind of channeling of that as well as making sure you're around the people that also love that as well? Like, um, it seems like you found this director and you, you click with them and also being able to speak true to what you think this character should have. Like, where did that, where did that come from? Like, do, have you just been doing acting so long that you just love it or what, what is it? Well, I think it's always, uh, always, uh, like, uh, like on the theater play, it's always a new thing new thing to do it's always in a way i approach each project as a new thing to do it's uh, uh and i enjoy that to go somewhere else to to work maybe on a different way of course there's techniques and things that have become probably like uh, uh unconscious as well that i that i do and how to uh, how do i pro- approach text for example and for me of course the script is is the the first tool to work with uh, and i i guess i I guess I separate uh, the work into into something that I can I do by myself, like this individual work, the work with the text and work with the characters and, and imagination, and that's kind of like the preparation, which also happens during filming, I think. Uh, but then there's the 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 like the working with the other people and this the, the uh, collaboration, the collaboration, the collaboration. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and and there the communication is the key and 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 that is definitely something that i have i'm so happy that i have been able to learn more and more uh because uh i really believe uh, communication is is the key mm-hmm. <laughs> to to have an enjoyable um workflow 
uh, and uh, and it's so important to say things out loud to appreciate you know, if you appreciate people you work with to say that out loud and this is something that we did when we were shooting hit big every day we said things out loud like i really love working with you it's i love how you did that it was very interesting and you know different small things big things and uh, and that really matters mm-hmm. uh, and also uh, discussing uh, about the the work and uh, not to speak it all like uh, not to analyze it through before doing it also it's nice to to have this excitement of how it's going to turn out to be not to like make okay let's do this and then i will react like this it's like i think all the preparation is to make it how to make it fun how to make it um, how to build the world so that we know where we are and we we that there's things to 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 act with and uh, it's, it's 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 about that mm-hmm. mm, there was another thought that i had in my mind Uh, yeah, this was this one 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 big idea I got uh, just a couple of months ago when someone asked me. This reporter asked me, like, "How do you know when your preparation is done? When you're a prepar- uh, preparing for a film, for example?" <laughs> and I was like, "Oh man, that's such a good question. I've been thinking about that because it's always like, do your prep and trust your prep and, and this this stuff. And and sometimes uh, sometimes I've noticed also that preparation can um, Can I can sometimes give pressure to myself, like okay, now I know how, how I would like like it to be. So when I have to somehow make it like that, and then give this pressure, like mm-hmm. that I have an idea how it would be right. Especially when working on characters who are based on true true people. Yeah. Uh, yeah but then, but this then I was thought about it, and I realized, well, actually, like no one is gonna light that green light for me. Except for myself, I can. The moment when I start to collaborate with people, and I accept myself, everything I have done, everything I am, my feelings, how I am, the face I'm with, with the, my work. That's that's the when the when I'm ready. When I start doing that, and that there's like no one is like evaluating. Like, have you done this and that? It's Uh, it's up to me what I would like to do, and, and that's something that I was kind of. I think I work intuitively because uh, that varies a lot. Like what what I'm how I'm preparing for a character, and what am I doing? Am I doing more like a physical approach, uh, or am I doing more with the text or whatever it is? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I was thinking about this idea with what you're saying, Johannes, about like expectations. You know, putting expectations on yourself and how that can kind of either limit you or be challenging. I mean, you want to set high expectations, but I think, you know, it's making me think about when like two actors do a scene and it goes really well, and then you got to do the scene again. And you're like, uh Oh, like I really want it to be uh-huh. as good as the, and, and then you're in it and you're like, it's not as good as the time we just did it. And the actors can feel that. And so then you maybe push and it gets worse or you try to recreate and it gets worse. And so I think having, you know, with what you're talking about, that kind of like, doing the work but then trusting the intuition and kind of letting it letting it flow um you know other people uh, other people don't know what you don't do Mm -hmm. and what i mean by that is Mm -hmm. like sometimes in our heads we're like oh that one time i did this thing and like if you don't do it the next time they might other people don't know that you know like the people watching a play or the people watching the film they don't know what's in the other takes you know I, i think about that a lot because sometimes you know we can put these 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 things in on ourselves that are like i remember when i had a show and everything was hitting you know and then a different night someone comes and they're like great show and you're like yeah but that one night i hit it all and this night i hit like you yeah. know eight out of ten but they weren't at that other show and and so i think it, it is an interesting i think it's a striving i think it's like you know wanting to get better but i also think it's like for for myself i've tried to really kind of release that and say great I had a really great, you know, run that time. Next time, not as great. That's okay, and less of like, what the f is wrong? What's wrong? And I think that's where actors go a lot. You know, something's wrong. Something's off. You know, I need to fix it, but it's not a hundred percent every time thing. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't experience that. It's always yeah. 100 for me. Always 100, Corbin? <laughs> Holy wow. cow. Tell me how. I've got my post-it up here. Tell me your you just got eat for breakfast. <laughs> I, I eat cereal. Corbin's selling a course, how to be 100%. How to be 100%. How to be perfect, just the way you want. <laughs> how to be perfect. You know how many courses we've sold of that? Zero, Johannes. We've sold zero. No one's one. His mother bought it. I, have, I haven't like, written it because I'm a perfectionist. <laughs> oh, my God. I would not buy that course, folks. We do not endorse Corbin Coyle's 100% every day course. Oh, do not come on. Not. Okay, we, we approve. We uh, approve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Johannes, yeah, I think I think uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I thought about that as a uh, uh, thought on that is uh, like something that I've uh, I'd like to think of, like to compare acting into archery, and in archery, it's it's always like the goal is to hit the bullseye. But it's but it's not. It's hard to hit bullseye if you have to hit it. If you kind of let make it like a must, I must mm -hmm. hit that bullseye. You have to respect every step on the way, mm -hmm. and you have to enjoy every step on the way. And then the bullseye just kind of appears. You know, it's just like it happens. So yeah. it's it's a it's in how how do you build your way there is is important. And that in a way, when in a scene, you sort of know what it's about for you then it's you're able to experience the scene every time and then it, it can be a bit different but it can it can be like i don't even want to say like good or bad because it's kind of like setting these criteria for things but it but in a way if you're just thinking of how it uh, thinking on the outcome then it comes up, then you generate pressure for yourself but when you actually think like, okay, what is it about for me? What do I want there? What am I interested on this scene? Like actually on myself. And then that's a way to create this connection with the character and what you're doing. And then it's interesting for you each time you do it. And it, it becomes fun. And you just want to take more takes because it's so much fun to do. You know? Well, of course, there's different kind of scenes, but... No, I, yeah. I, I love that, Johannes, and it, it reminds me of a book I really recommend. It, it, it's an acting book called The Actor and the Target, you know, it's by Declan Donnellan. It's a little bit of a, a thick acting book, but it, it talks, a, you know, a little bit about what you're talking about, having that target that you're aiming for in archery. And, and one of the things that, you know, when you brought that up, it made me think about, I like to use uh, basketball a lot. But what just happened to me is funny. Last week, I've been working on my, on my, my three point shooting, and I was really keeping track of my numbers of like, okay, how many did I make out of 10? Okay, I made five out of 10, six out of 10, seven, trying to get for, you know, eight or nine out of 10, 10 out of 10. And what's interesting is that was a couple weeks ago. Last week, I started to just kind of break down the steps of um, like my technique. And I started thinking about, okay, just follow my technique. Don't think about the number. And I started making so many more. So it was like breaking yeah. down the steps versus the result like the result i want is this and what i did is i kind of went back and i said no, no let's break down the steps and just kind of you know take make sure the you know the wrist is is cracked and make sure you know the, the form and the follow-through and then it just started to go in and it was so interesting for me it was kind of like this really interesting breakthrough where it's like well where i was putting my focus was on the results which makes sense but I had to go back and kind of retake all those layers and steps, almost like you're talking about with archery or even with acting, where it's like, well, yeah, you want the final thing to be an awesome performance, but take it back a little bit and see what you're building up to get there and what you're focusing on. And I think that can unlock it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's great because uh, yeah, then you can have the ease of doing it. You can enjoy it. Like if, if, you're, if you're pressuring the results, then yeah. you – then you kind of you get scared, you know, and and being scared makes you like ten, and uh, and you you lose the joy. I think and for me that happens uh, usually if I if I make it uh, like I have to. This has to be a great performance tonight. Oh my, that's hard. But when you're like, oh, there's people here. Okay, how do I do this? How do I like set up the props? How do I in, enjoy each step on the way? And then it's like, okay, what is this about for me? today this play it's like let's go figure it out step by step i don't have to worry about that scene that's coming in the midway i can just now begin right here and breathe and then and yeah uh, i mean is there anything step. corbin or johannes i mean maybe there is but like i i don't think there's much we do better with tension i mean pressure is one thing it can be nice to have pressure but i don't know what we do better 
I'm trying to think if there's anything we, I feel like tension a lot of times just in, a, in an interview, in a decision, tension, you know, in, in, in acting in a sport, like, you know, like, like you said, I love that word ease, finding the ease, because I feel like that's, there can be pressure and ease, but like when there's tension, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to, to flow if you're feeling a lot of tension, I think. I mean, you start to self judge yeah. too, you know, like, and if you start to self judge, you won't do the weird thing that people will celebrate. <laughs> it's as simple yes. as that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Anytime, you know, it, it's funny because anytime you start to like, yeah, reflect on yourself or self judge, like you're saying, or kind of get, mm -hmm. get in your own back way, at, get your own way. It almost like makes it worse. I mean, I don't know anyone, has anyone else had this where you're like, oh, I'm not going to try to do that thing. I'm not, and then you like do that. You're like, I'm not going to bump into that thing. And then you like, yeah. it, it, it also, it, it, it makes you kind of not focused outward. It kind of makes you focused inward, which, which, which can, you know, throw up hurdles. Johannes, you, that's you, right. Yeah. Right. You, you can, can I continue actually... that. Can I can just one more? <laughs> yeah, of course. No, 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 one more no, thought no. on that is it's, it. it's something something that I, I I learned in when I was in in the theater academy, uh, the University of Arts uh, in Helsinki, where I studied my my theater masters, uh, almost ten years ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one thing I learned was that uh, when I figure out what the what the work what the project or work, you know, is it plays, is it film, whatever it is, what it is, what, what is it personal to me uh, to do? Uh, what, is it, what is it meaningful for me to find, to do that work, to find that out? Uh, suddenly made it, made acting or like doing it so much more enjoyable. And uh, I got like, suddenly I felt like the whole world kind of like opened to me. I can kind of facilitate or, you know, I can like have more ideas and, you know, and I think what's connected to that is that I, that's when I realized it's not about me. It's not about me being somehow good because that's what everyone wants to be. I want to, I want to be good. I want to do this well. I want people to, to like it you know whatever it is the thought but it's it's quite it's quite in, like uh inaccurate it's it's like it's quite abstract to be good so, on some level but when it, there's like okay i want to tell this thing then suddenly it's less about me it's it's more about the thing that i'm doing and then it's much more easier to 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 do it that's what i think yeah so it's good to do meaningful things and and the, and the, it's it's uh you can find that you know on different levels on things it, it's like it can be it could be like a a fun small thing you do but you can okay I, this is, i want to do this because of this uh, yeah. you know whatever it is well and i think with what you're saying johannes i think yeah trying to find a connection personal and meaning is 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 great i i heard an actor once i i feel like he or she said you do a project for like one of three reasons and and one is a a, a paycheck uh one is because you want to work with somebody and then the third mm -hmm. is because it like means something to you like really means something because not every project does but i think when you can find mm -hmm. connection to it is great um and i think the more you can you know, work on those meaningful projects, like you're saying, or find meaning the, in them, the more it's just going to resonate with you, the more you're going to enjoy it. Um, but, but I've also found working with, if, even if the role is not the most meaningful, working with people that I want to work with again and again, or that inspire me, or that I find really amazing and talented, I think that can be a huge thing too, mm -hmm. where it's like, great, you know, this project is kind of gonna, it's okay, or it is what it is, but this is someone who, I want to work with artistically over and over again if I can. You know, I think that's another yeah. that's another thing to keep in mind with with that world, right? Yeah, yeah, I agree. What um what advice do you have uh, you know, for 10 years ago Johannes for for an actor who's who's interested? What um what advice would you give uh, a young uh a young Helsinkian, is that what you say? Uh, who's interested in acting, you know, what, uh, what would you, uh, what would you, what would you share with them? That's a good one. Um, well, 
He's thinking, everybody. Just I'm thinking, thinking hard. He's thinking uh, I'm, hard. I'm, uh, Smoke's I'm, coming uh, out of his ears. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess, I guess, I, I would encourage to, 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 to maybe you know today I will think about that. today. I would give this advice. Maybe tomorrow a different one. But uh, right now I could say. Uh, mm, Yeah. Well, oh, Johannes, think about it. Think, I'm, I'm going to answer. Kind of this kind hold on, of hold on. I'm going to answer my own question, Johannes. I'm going to answer my own. Okay, this is my okay, favorite okay, thing okay. to do now. This is my new thing. I'm going to ask a question. I'm going to answer it in the audience. <laughs> the John like, show. I was, about, I was about to. I was about to answer, but go it on. took so goddamn long. I mean, Jesus, <laughs> like I got so much dead air. I got to fill. We can cut that out, right, Corbin? <laughs> nope. No, I want to come back to you, Johannes. But my gosh, uh, our, our audience just all turned off the show. Um, what I was thinking about, and actually, Corbin, you and I were talking about this. And this is kind of a newer-ish uh, thought to me. If I was talking to somebody younger now, one of the things I would say is, think about who your authentic self is and, and mm. embrace and accept that. Yeah. Whatever that is. And, and I know it's not even specific just to acting, but it's like, I feel like everything now is so specific, which is great. It's so niche. Mm -hmm. You can find a channel. You can go on YouTube. You can find that thing that you love, that you're passionate about no matter where you live. If you live in Iowa, you know, let's say, or you're not near a big city, you used to have to kind of be in the big cities, I think for some of the more like specific things or was more challenging. And I think now there's an openness and I, and I love that. So I think what's great is like, if you love acting and you're in, uh, uh, and you're a Helsinkian, um, that's not the right way to say it. I apologize, but whatever, <laughs> whatever, however you say it, I'm just having fun with Johannes, whatever it is, you can check that out and you can like deep dive into it. You know what I mean? You can get the books, you can watch it. And I think mm -hmm. that's a really, it's an exciting, exciting time. You know, like when I was younger, a uh, little known fact, I did juggling and magic. I, Wow. As much as I, as much as I could like dive into like the world, like there was one book, I'm sure it's still out there called the complete juggler. And it was like the fattest book I ever had. And it was like all these, <laughs> and I, that was like my Bible. That was literally my Bible. I was trying to learn all these tricks and I would spend hours, you know, trying different juggling moves and I loved it, but there was not that many resources. There was not that many, you know, places to go. Mm -hmm. And I think it's great now that people, I think there's more and more of that thing. And I think finding that authentic self thing for yourself and just embracing it, you know, as opposed to like, oh, well, everyone around here is playing soccer. So I'm going to play soccer. Maybe you love soccer. Great. But if not, you know, find that thing. That it's really it's so hard to be your authentic self, but it's the most important thing. Like you just got to find the thing that you want, but it's the same thing with self-judging. As long as you can turn that off, you're going to be, you're going to be good. What? Yeah. Why is yeah. it so hard? Yeah. Like, like, like yeah. yeah. Why not take a chance on being yourself and, you know, appreciating who you are and, and, uh, and, uh, really, you know, loving yourself mm -hmm. in a good way. Yeah. You know, like but, a, but don't, but don't you feel, I mean, you know, and now this is, I, I guess I always, I always felt like when you try to be, it's like the highest nail is what the hammer hits. Mm -hmm. So when you are like, I'm my authentic self, people are kind of like, why are you dressing doing that why you know they kind of try to bring you back to the middle if that makes sense yeah. you know people are very it's not judgmental but it's like they have trouble that's i guess what i'm saying is i think that's that can be hard to stand up to at least for myself even you know if if someone was like what that, that? and i'd be like oh okay it, then i'll just go back to the norm people just want to put people into a box because it's easier that way but then you look at somebody like prince who was like it's the most unique person, <laughs> you know, and so like he yeah. and he was celebrated for exactly that. Um, yeah, and, like he, nobody told him how to dress, nobody told him how to be and how to sing and all the things that he did. Uh, yeah, I think people just want to put you in a box, but it's not worth it. That's not what's going to get you your gold. Yeah, and supposedly there's a story about Prince that like when he was younger, someone offered him you know money for his music, pretty good money, and he like refused, turned it down because he knew what he was worth, which mm, I think is really interesting. Cool. So he kind of could have sold out and supposedly he was like, no, you know, I know, I know, I know, you know, I know I'm going to be a success. I know what I'm worth. And, um, but like you're saying, Corbin, kind of knowing, knowing yourself, it's interesting, Johannes, bringing it back to our guest. He's been sitting there for 10 minutes. Like, Jesus, <laughs> why they even have me on? Um, I feel like that's something you do really well, Johannes. Mm -hmm. I feel like you are like, it's almost like no one, you know, uh, I can't speed you up even when I try and that's okay. <laughs> but like you, you, you have your own lane and you really embrace that, which is really cool. I think that, that, that do, do you feel like that? 
Uh, yeah, I do. I, I, yeah, certainly there's a difference probably with the cultures, you know, the American and Finnish way of, of mm. being. And, uh, and then, and then that's, that's a difference already, but um, yeah, yeah. But I, I totally ag- agree on your thoughts and what we're talking about. And, and uh, I'll take that as an advice for myself 10 years ago. And, uh, <laughs> and, and uh, there was something I would like to add on that. Uh, yeah, this one thought. Then mm, mm, like something that I've thought about is uh, like, what, what is what is the goal? Like, what is my dream uh, in acting? Or, you know, and uh, and is it something that I can actually already? Is it something that I'm actually already living through in a way? Mm. Like, of course, I can have visions of like of, uh, of more like the projects and films and characters that I'd like to do. And that's something to, it's good to have specific ideas of what I would like to do, but then to, like, there's no reason to not feel um, already like to be, to enjoy this step that I'm on. And this is probably something the past few years that I've become more and more aware of maybe, and you know, maybe it's an ongoing process, uh, but, but right now I feel like, uh, uh, that I'm able to enjoy where I am right now, and then sort of it's my own experience of of uh, of life and life of acting, and then where I am now. So, so maybe that's that's one one thing that I could say is to appreciate the moment you're in uh, right now, because uh, you yeah. might never have it again. And uh, and it's like each step has a lot of value and and looking back 10 years ago i really i really those are like dear memories uh, and uh, and uh, it was different time back then and you know it was like well i don't remember what i was doing back then but but to you know well you got the point well you've you've got yeah. You've got gratitude for where you are, mm-hmm. and I think you know yeah. that's one of the things they talk about with um, with happiness is the people who, whether you wake up in the morning and and you know say it out loud or whatever, or say it to yourself, if you have gratitude, you know, for where you're at, I think they they've just you know done studies or asked people, those people tend to be happier because they're like, okay, I'm grateful, and I think Johannes, with what you're talking about, I kind of see it as like train stations where it's like, well, when I get to that train station, I'm going to be really happy because I'll have the car and I'll have this and I'll have this. And you get to that train station and you're not maybe as happy as you thought you'd be, you know, and you're, you're missing where you are on the journey there. Mm -hmm. And I think gratitude and what you're talking about is like 10 years ago was a specific time in your life. And there was some freedom to that. There was some, you know, possibility to that. And there was, which can be wonderful. And so when people you know, I want to be 10 years, for, you know, down the road with my career and stuff. Well, maybe there's a reason, you know, you're not there yet. And I, I think that's mm-hmm. a great, that's a great, um, that's a great point. And, to and, have. and if there's, and if I have uh, ideas, what I'd like to do, or like, you know, like something that I would like to be in, then, then like, okay, then, and if I'm stressed about, about it, then it's like, okay, maybe I can do something about it. Maybe I can actually, like, uh, you know, start working on this idea on, on like, to be bold, to do it. And like, okay, I got this crazy idea to, to go there, to do this, it's like to abroad, you know, I, don't, I haven't heard anyone doing this. Uh, this is like, now this is a fantasy, but anyway, well, I came to LA, but I, I'm not, I wasn't the first fan to come to, to visit, but anyway, no. Uh, is to just do it and it's like it's not it's not stupid it's it's not it's not crazy it's just something you want to do and uh, uh suddenly you can find yourself in a place uh you could you haven't even imagined being in and you kind of find yourself there and be like oh yeah it's me it's me here with my with, with my thoughts it's it's still me uh, and it, it feels it feels uh it feels uh like you know something that i I can grasp and it's uh there's something uh, remembering classes uh where we met with you john uh i think it was this one class where we did this scene from dumb waiter uh and it, i'm there backstage with you like like my body's going like f- full-on different like adrenaline and and all this like and like so 
like excited uh, to go there on stage. And I just feel like I don't, I like I'm, again, I'm at this point, uh, you know, and I don't know what, what's going to happen. I'm, I'm like taking this leap of faith, going there to, to perform in this class in, in English that I haven't done much. And I'm, I'm abroad, far away from home. And, uh, you know, why am I here? I don't know. But, uh, and I'm, I'm so like, I, again, I put myself into the situation where I'm like, like not afraid, you know, to be afraid in a good way to be like, okay, I'm going, I'm going to take a leap that I want to take, but it's, it's making me so nervous. Uh, but I was like, oh, this is somewhere where I love to be. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. like, again, feeling the same feeling that I felt when I was, uh, in the auditions for the theater academy, you know, you know, this like it comes again and again. And even this podcast, I felt like, oh, this is this podcast. What am I going to say? It's like, and it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, well, of course, it's more comfortable to not go there. But, uh, but, uh, every time you take that leap, it's, it's always rewarding, you know, no matter what happens, it's, it's always uh, uh, yeah, this morning, rewarding. Yeah. This morning, I was talking to my son, Quill, who's six. And we were talking about Super Mario Brothers because he loves talking about Super <laughs> Mario Brothers. And he goes, what's the hardest part of the game? And I was like, uh, I don't know, like, you know, defeating Bowser or something. And he's like, he's like, no, when you have to jump on the, like the squares that are invisible, you know, like you don't see them, like they're not there and you got to jump on them and like they just like appear. And I was like, hmm. Quill, that's called faith. <laughs> he's like huh what i was like okay it's a big discussion we're not gonna get into it but i was like dang i went deep early in the morning around breakfast like wow uh and he had no clue and annie's just like just get him to school but i was like anyone else like that was a beautiful moment like do you see this you see you see the point i made there Quill? i'm like, a genius I'm a gen- it was like a macarthur genius moment i was like submit that father conversation yep to the macarthur junior grant um father of the year but what was really funny is afterwards, Johannes, I was thinking about it and what you just said. It's so funny. I know it's simplistic, but it's like that 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 leap of faith or that <laughs> jumping and trusting, uh, which is the point I made this morning. Um, no, it it it. I think you're gonna. I think people will find that taking an action step towards that thing is going to be way more satisfying than the stress, annoyance, worry, nervousness of not, you know? And I think that's what stops people from doing things is they feel, I don't know, I'm not going to be amazing at it. I'm not going to be really good. What if it sucks? And then they say, you know what, maybe I just won't do it. I'll just keep doing what I know is, you know, comfortably uncomfortable or uncomfortably comfortable or whatever that is. And so I think Johannes, they, they don't do that. They don't, travel to another country to study and, you know, and, and yeah. act in a different language and things like that. Right. Corbin, what do you think? Mm-hmm. I just, yeah, I think it's an, so impressive that you know, honestly, you trust your instincts so much. Like, I think that's what it comes down to. It's, it's, it's something that I struggle with. I think a lot of people struggle with when it comes to what you're talking about, John, it's like, you kind of get stuck in your rut, but the thing is, is that doesn't go away. That just bubbles up and it gets to a boiling point. Johannes is just constantly, as we can tell, super chill. <laughs> like it's just like, <laughs> like you're just always ready for whatever's in front of you. And I think that's super important. And I think you've tapped into something that people spend a lifetime trying to find. And I think that, I don't know, I'm impressed with that you're able to do that. And but like, I think that also gets people to gravitate towards you and want to keep working with you too. You know, like mm-hmm. having somebody who's that thoughtful and uh, chill, for lack of a better word, on set is like exactly what you want to be around for 14 hour days, you know? Thank you. I'm glad I came. (laughs) (laughs) No, you know, it's funny. I I love that word thoughtful Corbin for Johannes. I've, I've, I've I've known Johannes for a while now and we've, we've hung out a bunch and I love the word thoughtful. The other thing I was thinking about with, with Johannes, when you said that was um, his like ability to show up or be there. You know, he's one of those people where he says, yeah, I'll be there. And then he's there, mm-hmm. you know, and it's not a big show of it. Um, but I think that's another thing that is wonderful when you find people like that. You know, um, this play I'm doing, one of the guys who's producing it, his other producer, I was like, oh, you know, how did, you know, how did you meet her? How did you, you know, how did she get involved? He's like, she's one of those people who says she's going to do it. And then she does it. And I was like, that's so cool. Like you could just see it, even the way he talked about her 
you know? And I was like, that's really great. Like you, you realize, especially making things as you get a little bit older, how valuable that is. You know, when you're young, it's like, oh, okay, they didn't show whatever, blah, blah. But when you get older, you're like, I like those people that say, I'm going to be there at this time. I'm going to be there. I'm going to show up. Um, and I think Johannes, you definitely have that, you know, that too. Uh, I want to talk about, you're welcome. I want to talk about, um, you worked on, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think the biggest budget finish film unknown soldier and then didn't has didn't it make also like the most the most uh the most money of a finished film just because i'm saying it's a big it's a big deal uh unknown soldier do you want to talk talk a bit about that yeah yeah th thank you yeah, for sure uh yeah unknown soldier uh is a is a is a very is a very finished thing it's it's originally a novel uh written after the second world war and it's like it's it's a story of this uh, platoon uh in the war between Finland and Russia, uh, uh, and uh, and it was, uh, it has been filmed three times. This book uh, back in the fifties for the first time, then in the eighties, and now in two thousand and seventeen when our film came out, uh, and there was a, a lot of debate on like, is it it's is it still relevant to 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 do it. Um, but for us making it, it it felt like it was uh, for me personally, uh, and I, I guess I can speak for for my colleagues as well that it it really was a meaningful thing to work on this piece of history that has shaped us in, in many ways. The Finnish the Finnish people, the culture, the mentality. It, it's something that uh, that uh, is is really shown in the in the in the way people behave you know there's this trauma of, of the of the war it's not it's not that long ago uh and making it and also after after the release i had these wonderful discussions with my 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 relatives about mm. our past and uh, you know how it has shaped our family and, and all this uh for me already personally it felt like a like a very big project uh and uh, we shot it in 2016, in the period of from J beginning of June until I think the last things we shot was uh, January 2017. Uh, we shot the whole summer and, and some some in the in fall as well, and then then in the winter in January. Uh, it was a long long shoot. I think the total amount of days was uh, well. I guess you know things compared to the big American but films are always like well everything's bigger in the in America but but for us it was uh, it was uh, like a historically a historically huge project yeah. mm -hmm. to be in um, and it was quite interesting uh, we we had a lot of training before it with the actors uh, well, we had to a lot of physical training to to get the posture of of uh, of people from back in the day and uh, and also uh you know to to we to look like we are in the war in the in the 40s uh and a lot of training like physical training camps uh and also like the battle battle stuff as well uh, shooting and all these things that we can, so we can, we're able to, to do it and also to improvise because when we were shooting the battle scenes, for example, there was like, we had three cameras shooting and it was like uh -huh. really up, up to us to make it believable. Uh, of course the director was helping us a lot and, and stunt coordinators, but, but still was, I found that when we were shooting that it was like, Oh, okay. Thank God. I, I know. What i'm doing <laughs> so i can i can i can uh, i can actually because it's there's a lot of things to you know how to, i was an officer you know how to lead a lead a team in the battle how to do it how, what are the commands and why and it's uh, uh but yeah we, we stayed it was it was a bit, bit of a, like a method thing i think it, it came from us actors the idea that we sh we could uh, sleep in tents when we we're shooting. Yeah, because so we were, what we were talking about earlier, right? So you guys kind of like slept like the soldiers, right? I remember you telling yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, sort of. Yeah, because we were shooting inside this army area. It was like a restricted area with a huge forests there, uh, and we slept there for for you know all all week, and then on weekends we 
came back to Helsinki or wherever we lived. Uh, we slept in the tent. We had a campfire each evening. Uh, we sauna, swam in this small pond. Uh, then in the morning we went to shoot. And in, in, at nighttime we have this. We have to make shifts for keeping up the fire place in the tent so we won't freeze, and also to keep the mosquitoes away. Because uh, there's a lot of those here. Um, yeah, it was a very interesting project to, to be involved in, and and, uh, uh, and and the group of actors who were asked the platoon and you know us who were sleeping there in the tents and spending the whole time together. Uh, it really made us a very uh, kind of unified group, yeah, and tight, we tight, we now tight we yeah. tight 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 group, and we we keep in touch all the time, and uh, and we meet. Uh, every year um, in in June, uh, it's a nice tradition now to to see everybody. And because it was, I think it was for us. Uh, concerning it is uh, about our grandparents as well, and and somehow to imagine ourselves and to also to go through that long and also physically draining and mentally draining shoot not to say that it's like comes even close to anything compared to the real thing you of course not but but uh, but, but for for a film shoot it was a it was a special thing and we wanted it to be that way of course <laughs> we were making a lot of jokes about you know about sleeping in the tents and being so awful tired some days and like is it really necessary but but it was uh <laughs> but it was like i, I it was something that we wanted to do uh, and uh, and it really if we would have been sleeping in in let's say individual hotel rooms i, I doubt that we would have the same group that we have now yeah. uh, and also as i was saying to go to go through and imagine ourselves in these situations where we know that our grandparents have been in and our ancestors it's a mm. it's a it's a really beautiful bond in my opinion and uh i'm very grateful that i could have been involved in this in this movie and and it was a for me personally it was a it was a big deal it was uh well well the biggest film i've done so far and uh and uh and then it was a of course, uh, well, it was very important for me personally, as also concerning like, uh, well, it's hard to say what happened, you know, things that happened after, you know, but, uh, well, we reached a, a wide audience. So it was, of course, for each of us, it was also in that perspective, an important project. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I feel like a day on set or I don't know. Yeah. Like a day on set is like three months of real life, uh, with bonding with people. Like for mm -hmm. some reason on set, you bond very yeah. quickly, you know, in a sense, it's like, you know, it is like this family coming together for this intense thing that you're all kind of pulling in the same way, which can be good or bad. You know, you can make fast <laughs> friends, you can, you know, kind of someone can, if they annoy you, they're there too. So I think it is, but it, it definitely is this, you know, thing that comes together and it kind of intensifies, uh, relationships, you know, um, for sure, friendships, romantic relations, all that stuff is kind of like heightened. Um, I want to, uh, I appreciate that. And because and I, I think it's cool that people can check that movie out, Unknown Soldier. The other one that I completely, and this shows Johannes's, it's called Range, Corbin. Um, he did a movie called Heavy Trip, which is a comedy, uh, completely like the opposite of Unknown Soldier. So, um, Johannes, just, just mentioned that, now that, didn't that film play at South by Southwest? Heavy trip, it did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, nice international premiere in South by. It was yeah. a fun trip to visit Austin. It was great. <laughs> oh, so you yeah, you went so right? You went. Yeah, how was it? I was went. Cool? Yeah, I went. It, it was amazing. I really loved that festival, and it was uh, it's great to visit Austin and to just uh, wander around looking at films and and uh, music and all these tech things and different talks super interesting panels about different topics uh, it was it was i loved it and also the uh, reception of the film was was so great it was so amazing because well, i think like film comes alive when you when you present it to an audience it, it's like it's mm -hmm. the the last ingredient same thing with with place uh i remember being there coming to the screen first screening 
and we were there with our group very excited like what was it going to be like do they get it it's, it's just finished film about a death metal band <laughs> it's like a, it's a, such a local thing and uh and the, the the humor is so lovely so sincere and uh, and all these characters are so sincere and and uh and it being uh, our directors their first film which they wrote and it's it's really like their baby it's something that they they created uh, and it's it's they put so much of themselves into their sense of humor and their way to look at life and uh, and uh, and this very like a beautiful thing and when they were <laughs> and, in Los, and, when, when they were when, in Los, uh, when, you know, as well hold your thought yeah, what's the saying, were... saying, oh, go ahead go okay. ahead go ahead yeah, no, yeah, no, and no. then the audience oh, it was so much fun to see, to see the audience just like laughing out loud like screaming mm -hmm. and like like clapping throughout the film like oh going crazy it was like is this for real it was, it was uh, like okay this is like okay they get it <laughs> it's like and i guess the well it's of course the festival audience is i guess they're usually like uh like even more more like uh like willing to react on films and it's like it's a party but uh, and also probably the american audience usually like might i could say that they are usually maybe more uh like uh more bold to to you know to express themselves mm -hmm. in the audience uh, and uh, so it was also about that but it was it was wonderful yeah go on john no i was just gonna say uh uh corbin fun fun side note with this is when the directors were in la johannes who's like such a connector was like you gotta meet john john you gotta meet them and so they, they johannes wasn't even in town and we annie and i my wife and i had them over for dinner so we had them over <laughs> for dinner and johannes wasn't even here which was such a fun uh that's nice uh, such a fun night yes to, to get to know them um yeah thanks but, for doing that it was great oh and, no, and was... because because you, you also met then yuka when you came mm -hmm. to finland yeah, you can, uh, exactly summer. exactly yeah. yeah um which was which was awesome um but going from unknown soldier period piece drama war mm -hmm. heavy metal uh uh heavy trip uh comedy i mean it's kind of the the actor's dream johannes yeah. pretty 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 awesome right i mean that's a that's a pretty pretty special thing to be able to you know to, to be able to do those things right yeah i'm grateful yeah yeah how was it working on like what do you do? You, what do you like to work on more? And like, what is the thing that you like about each um, comedy drama? Like, it seems like you you might want to get into the that person. Like you said that the comedy was sincerity, and I think that's very important to you. Mm. Um, and I was wondering how how that works with comedy as well as drama. Yeah, it's it's. I I believe they're so s somehow the same thing in mm -hmm. a way. It's 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 just like. Uh, mm, yeah because i i find that it's, you can you can you can laugh at things and you can cry at things and it's uh usually the same thing that makes you laugh or cry or you know it's kind of the same thing yeah, in a sure. way it's just like how you look at it and uh and somehow the approach to the character is always still similar you know to 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 to, to how to connect to it uh, but i definitely uh enjoy both uh and uh and always enjoy finding the humor in things mm -hmm. even when doing like a like a tragic serious thing it's always important to be able to to also to be able to laugh uh, you know when doing it and to have fun and uh, it's always when you're not supposed to laugh it's you know the, <laughs> it's, it's you know that's when you really start to find yeah <laughs> the most laughable thing. it's human yeah. I, I, fe I feel like here's the two different kind of actors corbin so like if johannes and i did a scene together and we got laughs and then it ended i'd be like johannes do you hear all those laughs man i heard each every it's in he's like i didn't hear any laughs i'm like i was just in the character i'm like oh my god i heard when i said this funny <laughs> thing and they laughed and this yeah. funny thing so there's two different actors i feel like johannes would end and be like i don't know did we get laughs and yeah. be like yes we did you know he's so i was in that world yeah he was in that world uh, what and happened then, <laughs> what happened and then and then the laughs the laughs came versus me who comes from improv where i'm like what would they say did they laugh good keep going keep going where it's working they're liking it you know? yeah. they're liking it so uh um, yeah, yeah. but but i love that i love that commitment to I, character I, yeah go ahead yeah I, I really i really enjoy like uh i've always appreciated like, like physical comedy 
uh, and I remember watching as a kid a lot of like Jim Carrey, uh, Rowan Atkinson, mm. uh, and later then also of course like Chaplin and and uh, and, uh, and and then later Jacques Tati made a huge impression, and uh, there's something about that stuff that I really enjoy uh, mm. as well, and to yeah. to kind of find the rhythm in that way and something that I feels feels very connectable to my to me for sure uh, yeah I love it I love it well uh Corbin I think we're getting about to that time yes we are all right Johannes ah. it's, it's time for <laughs> it was one thing that your best, best oh, bad acting. Acting. no 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 do not you're oh we're losing him on zoom no, no we're no, not no. We're bringing him back. <laughs> all right Johannes we're gonna send you Take a look in the chat. I know you're on your phone. We'll see if we can figure this out. All right. Whoa, it's, it's a monologue. <laughs> well, it's a monologue. You're an actor's actor. Uh, it's from the movie Braveheart. Here's the thing. You don't have to do it like it's from. You can do it however you want. Um, and just have fun. We might give you a redirect, but it's your best bad acting. So have fun going over the top with it. Whenever you need it. <laughs> okay, okay. I fight and you may die. Run and you live at least a while. And dying in your beds many years from now. Would you be willing to trade all the days from this day to that? For one chance, just one chance to come back here and tell our enemies. That they may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom. <laughs> that was so bad. That was so no, bad. that was well, so That was fun. your best bad acting. That was your best <laughs> bad acting. I okay. love the water. Um, I love yeah. the water in the hands. The water was so for those for those that are listening. He put water like on his face, almost like he was about to shave himself <laughs> or just getting into character. And I, it was it was great. I loved it. I loved it. Corbin, do you have a redirect? Okay. Uh, I want to feel more energy. I want to feel. I want to feel like you're you're right. hyping up these people. Okay, so hype them up, and I think I think um, uh, uh, Johannes, can you do it? Uh, can you just try it as much as you can in Finnish and just yeah, you're an unknown soldier. You're hyping them up. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. So I, I don't need to think about them. See, <laughs> no, don't worry about that. <laughs> don't worry about it. No, don't no. Worry about that. Dear audience, I hope you can see me. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. In okay. Finnish or or in, in English? Oh, in Finnish. Just, let's, I, try I'll just, uh... let's try and finish. Okay, Maybe okay. except for our freedom or something. I don't know. Let's just whatever. There's no wrong. There's no wrong. Okay. 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 I. I still. Yes, I want to go. You also. Yes, I want to Ainakin hetken. Ja voit kuolla sun sänky. Monen vuoden päästä tästä. Olisit se valmis luovuttamaan kaikki sun päivät. Tästä päivästä siihen. Sulla olisi yksi mahdollisuus. Vaan yksi mahdollisuus. Tulla takamas, takasi tänne. Ja kertoa sun vihollisille. Että ne voi ottaa sun elämän. Mun ei voi ikinä ottaa. <laughs> yes, that was a wow. Ow, on the on the fly translate. Wow, on the fly, and it felt like it was a three page monologue and finish. I just oh, loved it. It's it. Way it's more like, intense like, too. It was, so it was way more intense. Everything like an honest. opera. Oh, that wow. was oh my okay, okay. gosh. Wow. Did I get one more, or was that it? Oh, um, I'm in. I'm good. I don't. Do think, you have Do you have another take? Okay, okay. No, no. Yeah, yeah, I liked it. I liked, I liked it a it. lot. I liked it a lot. That was so cool. <laughs> I'm not, all right. It's good to uh, embarrass yourself once a day. <laughs> no, that was great. Or twice. Good. Let's do one more. Let's do one more, Johannes. Let's have fun. Let's uh, 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 let's go back and forth with it, you and me. We'll go back and forth. You do a line and I'll do a line. We've never done this before. Corbin, this is unprecedented. Okay, yeah. All right. I'll, I'll start. Okay. I fight and you may die. Run and you live. 
at least a while. And dying in your beds many years from now, would you be willing to trade all the days? From this day to that. For one chance. Just, just one, one chance. To come back here. And tell our enemies. That they may take our lives. But they'll, but they'll never, never take our freedom. <laughs> That's the new intro to the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Every the time. New intro <laughs> to the show. We just, be yeah. honest, virtual high five. <laughs> virtual Kaboosh. high five. Bam. Kaboosh. <laughs> Lovely. Lovely. We just got to, we got to do it again where you don't top out in the reds. Everything else, <laughs> print it, Corbin. Print it. Print, print, it. print it. So good. Um, Johannes, this was amazing. Uh, knowing you, you know, we could definitely have chatted for another three hours. Yes. Um, this yeah. was, this was lovely, man. You, you know, I, I love what, I love what Corbin was saying. You are just like a thoughtful, loving, supportive, wonderful actor, talented actor. There's a reason you're having so much success. There's a reason you keep working. Uh, we're excited for your career. We're excited for everything you're doing. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's fabulous, man. It just brings me joy to see you, you know, doing so much wonderful stuff. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, Corbin. Thank you for having me and thank you for doing this. It's, it's wonderful to, to, uh, to listen to about thoughts on acting from different people and to, to share, share thoughts on this, on this thing that is, to me, I feel acting is more than just acting in a way, you know, mm -hmm. things that we're talking about with acting is, is, is talking about life and what that is for sure also love that love that and on our podcast app um oh we lost you for one second uh on our podcast app we can tell what country people are listening from so we're gonna know how big your fan base is in finland because if that number doesn't go up johannes then we got you know, we gotta talk to you <laughs> we gotta talk we gotta talk so we want to see our fin our finland numbers just boost to the roost boost to the roof um, all right. Well, Johannes, we won't keep you any longer. So great having you here. Thank you so much for your time. This was wonderful. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks, bud. Talk to you later. Thank you, guys. Talk to you later. Thank you for listening to the Movie Five Day Podcast.